You're going to have to ask yourself a couple of questions uh, by the end of the program. Why, why would our schools leave all of this history out? I mean, this is some of the, the, the greatest American story uh, that you've, you've ever heard. Why would, they, why would they do that? And it's everywhere. You just don't know where to look. If you take a look at the revolutionary paintings, the paintings of revolutionary times, uh, here it is, it's the Boston Tea Party, a bunch of white guys, and then these people strangely looking like Indians, and they're not. Uh, but that's it, not a lot of racial diversity. Um, if you watch movies, one a great, great movie, uh, this is John Adams. You watch John Adams, and you don't see a lot of racial di diversity. I'm currently watching uh, Johnny Tremaine. Uh, this is... Uh, I love this movie. I remember this growing up. I was watching it with my kids just last night, and I noticed there are a couple of uh, American Indians, uh, but you don't see any African Americans unless they're slaves. They will show people as slaves, but that's it. Now, I want to show you a painting of the batter, Battle of uh, Bunker Hill. Here's the Battle of Bunker Hill. Bunch of white guys, right? Unless you know where to look right here. That's Peter Salem. He was actually the hero of the battle. It doesn't look like he's a hero there. He looks like he's cowering behind the white guy with a sword. He was the hero of the battle. And he saved scores of American lives that day. Why don't we know this? Look here. African American helping row the boat across. You know what his name was? Prince Whipple. He fought alongside Washington during the Revolution. Take a look at this one, this uh, painting of, uh, this is uh, the uh, Marquis uh, de Lafayette. He, if you look at this, you just think, oh yeah, and then he had, he made his slave dress up like I, I don't know what. But that's what you would think, right? This guy is incredibly important. This guy may have won the Revolutionary War. James Armistead was his name. How did he win the Revolutionary War? Double spy. I'm going to let David tell the story here in a minute, but basically the Brits thought that he was spying for them, but he was spying for General Washington. He'd give the Brits bad intel and reveal the good critical information to General Washington. Did you know this story? Why? I'm, I'm so tired of people saying, well, it was just the white people, white people, white people. No, no. Why are we intentionally leaving others out? There are black founders. Human history. If I ask the audience, um, when did America have its first African-American judge? What year would you say? Anybody, take a guess. Judge. 1860s? Anybody? 1770. 1770. 1770. 1770. Amy, is that just a wild guess? It, no, not. I wasn't sure exactly, but I think it's about. 1770. Tell me. 1768. Wentworth Cheswell, New Hampshire, elected to office in New Hampshire. He was reelected for the next 49 years, held eight different political positions. Really cool story about him is we all know that Paul Revere made his midnight ride. We also know he wasn't the only guy riding that night. Mm -hmm. Now the guy riding went with Cheswell, black and white. Riding now how is side. it possible? Did you know that we had an African American ride to say the British are coming? The British are coming. <laughs> Amy did. <laughs> Amy did. Anybody else besides Amy know that? Two, three. Okay, three people in the audience. Yeah. Is now, the white guy with the sword is Thomas Grosner. So you have Thomas Grosner and you have Peter Salem, black and white, fighting side by side. But Peter is definitely the hero that day. 1817, this painting is done. And all the way up until the 1980s, we knew that that was Peter Salem, the hero of Bunker Hill. 1980s, the professors got together and said, oh, no, that's not Peter Salem. Um, we think that that's Grosvenor's slave is who that is. It, it's, it's not Peter Salem. Oh, you're kidding. No, in the 80s, they, they changed that from Peter Salem to Grosvenor's slave, a Saba. And that's what they say, oh, no, it's not Peter. It's a Saba, Grosvenor. It's his slave. 
how come the guy who painted it and the guy who was there and the guy who saw it and painted what he saw had him as Peter Salem and now we've all convinced oh no it's a slave second because first one thing that I think is missing in America and it is the key to America has been the difference between individual rights and collective rights and this man articulated that in a speech entitled our composite nationality Frederick Douglass said I know of no rights of color superior to the rights of humanity. He thought the worst thing that could happen for blacks after the Civil War was to treat them as exceptions in the law. And so today with the discursive logjam that we have over things like affirmative action and group rights and the only thing that you get from government is if you ally with others who look like you or somehow are and categorized this is, like you. This goes into your theory that this is why this is not being taught because you can't play the victim card. If you don't... It goes against the traditional victim narrative. After the Civil War, the history was actually written by the losers. That's the one time in history yeah, where exactly. the losers That's exactly wrote right. the history. That's exactly right. Really interesting perspective. That's exactly right. All right, David, explain quickly. Let's go through these people. Let's go through these. Uh, uh, this guy right here, this is Lemuel Haynes. Lemuel Haynes is uh, a soldier in the American Revolution. He's a black preacher. He's the first black preacher ordained in America that was a pastor of a white congregation in Vermont, Massachusetts, New York, several places. A, he, wait, a black professor in black a preacher, white... That's right, in a I white mean, church. Yeah, black, uh, uh, black minister. Black minister in a white church in four different states. He was ordained in the Congregationalist denomination in 1785. Mm -hmm. he received, he's the first black to receive a master's degree in America. He got that in 1804 from Middlebury College. So Lemuel Haynes, uh, every year on Washington's birthday, he preached a special sermon about George Washington, his commander-in-chief in all of his churches where he was. So we don't hear about Lemuel Haynes. Uh, this is Benjamin Banneker. I think he's the most brilliant scientist in American history. This guy, wow. unbelievable what he did. He is, he's the guy More who, so than, than uh, Franklin? Uh, I, I would put Franklin and Banneker almost equal. Now, Franklin Holy did cow. a lot of inventions. This guy one time took a pocket watch. He, he taught himself how to read. He taught himself science. He wrote an almanac that 10 years ahead, he was able to predict to the minute, solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, 10 years before they happened. I mean, by, by watching the motion through a telescope, it, unbelievable what the guy did. He once took the back off a pocket watch, saw how it worked, went home and carved a wooden clock with all the gears mainspring and it was accurate to within one minute a year a wooden clock the Holy guy did cow. he's the guy who laid out washington dc he, he's the the surveyor who did all that he's a brilliant mathematician jefferson Gave you never a, knew this. No. Jefferson gave him his example to France. Said, "Hey, you guys in France think that blacks are inferior? Here's Benjamin Banneker." Okay, first, I, uh, representatives, I asked, "When do we have our first black speaker of the House? Uh, when do we have the first speaker of the House? Uh, 1789. 7, 1789. When did we have our first black speaker of the House? I bet most people would say never, never. Except it was right here." Joseph Hayne Rainey. Joseph Hayne Rainey of South Carolina is first black to preside over the House of Representatives. Uh, these are the first seven blacks elected to Congress. You have here Senator Hiram Rhodes Revels, the first black U.S. Senator elected. He was a minister of the gospel. He was a missionary. He worked with Frederick Douglass. He recruited three regiments of black soldiers in, in the uh, Civil War, and he was a missionary to slaves in the South. Uh, you have here Benjamin Turner, uh, Josiah Wall, the large. Th this guy right here is really cool. Uh, Robert Brown Elliott is probably the most brilliant guy of that era. He actually took on the vice president of the Confederacy in a debate on the floor and just tore his head off. The, the racist okay. Alexander Stevens. Just, it was great. When, debate. when when did we turn? Were these guys proud Americans or did oh, they say golly. we? we, we uh, they, th this is the epitome uh, of what we were just talking about. These were individual guys. Half of these guys taught themselves to read. Half of these guys were slaves. And five years later, they're sitting in Congress. And as slaves, it was a capital offense to learn to read. So these guys in five years, and I'll guarantee you read their speeches and records of Congress, you better have a dictionary and a thesaurus in both hands because you won't understand the language. that you. It is so brilliant what these guys did. And, and but were, they, were they there to say the white man is bad and the America is oh, bad? No, no. And the, these guys were, uh, uh, Richard Allen, let me go back here. Richard Allen Wait. had been in slavery. Richard Allen was in slavery and he held no bitterness at all. He says, God would not allow bitterness even in Joseph when he was in prison. Do you think God will allow it in us? He said, we can't have bitterness. He said, by the way, there were some whites who held us in slavery, but it's whites who are working for our freedom. I mean, these guys had no bitterness. They, weren't, they wouldn't allow it.